Welcome to Firebase Release Notes for March, where we cover recent big and small releases from Firebase. Now we have five releases to cover today, so let's dig in right away. Version 10.3 of our command line interface just came out and added a bunch of new endpoints to the cloud storage emulator, specifically for using it with our admin SDKs. So if you are developing code with our local emulator suite, you can now use rewrite2, copy2, create readstream, list, get files, and exists in your trusted go to. Now keep in mind that these are all brand new, so there may be some issues with the admin SDK for your specific platform. So if something doesn't work the way that you expect it to, be sure to post steps on how to reproduce that issue to the GitHub repo that I linked below. We added another four new languages to our pre-built user interface package for signing in to Firebase from your Flutter apps. New this past month were German, Hindi, Turkish, and Bahasa Indonesia. Now this brings the total number of languages to 11, which is really impressive given that we only started this package a few months ago. And all of these language files are community contributed. So if you'd like to allow your users to sign in in your language, head over to the link that I included in the description to submit a pull request. The time that it takes from when your user taps the icon of your app until the moment that they can start using the app is a crucial factor in user satisfaction. And one way to improve the startup time is by delaying the initialization of libraries and SDKs until they are really needed. But since Firebase Performance Monitoring already analyzes your application during startup, its SDK has to be loaded really early on, so it's crucial that it loads quickly. Well, our Perfmon team has improved the startup performance of its Android SDK in recent releases. And this has reduced the impact on the startup time of your app by over 35%, as you can see here. So upgrade today to get faster app startup while also getting detailed performance metrics from your real users. And to learn even more about this change, read the blog post that I'll link below. When you serve static assets through Firebase hosting, your content is delivered to users from a global network of hundreds of so-called edge servers. These servers cache your content so that future visitors that hit the same edge get a response almost instantly. But for the first users on an edge that requests a specific file, that edge server will then have to call back to a central origin server that contains your deployed files and their configuration. So the first user in an area that requests a specific piece of content will see a slower response time than subsequent users. Well, we just added additional origin servers in Europe and Asia, which speeds up the lookups from the edge servers in those regions. And this has resulted in a 50% reduction in the time to first byte for many users in those areas when they request fresh content. And the best news? There's nothing you need to do. It all happens automatically. If a problem that you fixed in your code reappears, that is known as a regression. The Crashlytics dashboard now shows a red label for such issues that have reoccurred, making it easier for you to filter and prioritize them. And if you want to learn more about how Crashlytics identifies these regressions, have a look at the link to this documentation that I included below. Those were all the updates we have time for today. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. My name is Frank Perpuff, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.